speaking in. Well, it's good to have everybody here tonight. I'm glad you came out. Um, we have a word of prayer and get started on our devotion tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Father, we're grateful to be here. It's our desire, Lord, to learn more about you uh, through your word. And so we ask you, Lord, to speak to our hearts. Lord, in ways that we can understand, reveal things to us, Lord, and give us the wisdom to apply it to our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Okay. I don't know if this tonight is going to speak to anybody, um, but it might. The title of it is The Cure for Loneliness. Now, some of us, may have so much going on, so busy all the time, busy, 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 busy. Um, you know, getting lonely is the last thing you think about happening to you. But, um, but it can be a very real thing, and there's a very good answer for these things in God's Word. And so we'll talk about that. Look, if you will, to Philippians chapter 1. I'll just look at a comment that the Apostle Paul made in here. Philippians, of course, this is one of the prison epistles, uh, A.D. 60 to 62, it says, I think, 62 A.D., first imprisonment, he wrote this, Ephesians, Colossians, Philemon, while he was in prison. I always thought that was interesting, especially looking at how happy he seemed to be. <laughs> That's always been interesting to me, too. It's a happy. Here for loneliness. All right, let's look at verses 12 through 14. Ver uh, chapter 1, 12 through 14. Sorry to interrupt. Okay, verse 12. But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places, and many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. And so, um, him speaking about being in prison there. Uh, from what I understood about it, just in reading, it was more so of a house arrest type thing. He wasn't necessarily behind bars, you know, eating rations and all that, because... Uh, the people that were there were able to be with him. Uh, it was more like a house arrest. And uh, so he was able to send these letters out and talk to, I know, Timothy. Uh, there in verse 1 it says, Paul and Timothy, servants of Jesus Christ. And so that's kind of the setting. He was there in Rome. But notice what it says there in verse 12. He said, the things which happened unto me. Um, it says there in verse, chapter 2, verse 17. It says, yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. So there he was uh, in somewhat of a uh, house arrest situation, but he was glad where he was. Um, the question comes up, you know, are you ready to be offered? Uh, to search our hearts and to look at the whether or not we're ready to follow the Lord, whatever it may be. 
And so I asked that question. You know, he's talking about the cure for loneliness. Does this sound like the Apostle Paul suffered from loneliness? He, did, he wasn't lonely because he was in the service of the Lord. Um, so we have to face that same kind of a question in our hearts. And I wrote down the verse there in Acts uh, where Jesus spoke to Ananias, you know. Paul, when he was Saul, was struck blind. And the thing that he told Ananias about Paul was in Acts chapter 9, verse 15, the Lord said to Ananias, Go thy way, for Paul is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the, the nations, the Gentiles, and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. This is where we are to be willing, is willing to sacrifice our lives. The Bible talks about it like, I die, you know, I die daily, the Apostle Paul said. I die daily. Uh, but some of these things that happened unto him there, it mentions in verse 12, I would, you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me turned out to be good. Right? The things which happened unto me turned out to be good. Let me give you some examples of some things that happened to Paul. Because these are the things he's talking about. Of course, he's writing the letter there to the Philippians. And so this was Philippi. This was in the, uh, Macedonia. Right? Uh, you remember Alexander the Great, Macedon? Quick question. How long was Paul in prison? Uh, two years, I think, this time. Um, but anyway, Acts chapter 16, verse 12 tells us, and from thence to Philippi, so this is some of the things that happened to him in Philippi. And you'll remember the story uh, when I read it. It says, it came to pass, Acts chapter 15, excuse me, 16 and verse 16, it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. And she was a witch, right? The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this she did many days. So she got on his nerves, didn't she? With us. Okay. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said, and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour, and when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas, and drew them into the marketplace under the rulers, and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes, and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. So there they were, stripped of their clothes, beaten, thrown in jail, and put in the stocks. All right? And so you have over here in verse 12 in Philippians, But I would ye understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather under the furtherance of the gospel. And so he's basically sitting there uh, glad that he did what he did. Hmm. Acts chapter 14 and verse 19, here's another example of things that befell him, things that happened unto him. It says, There came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. So he was stoned. Another one, Acts chapter 27, verse 41, says, Falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and four, uh, four parts stuck fast and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with violence of the waves, and the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape, but the centurion willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose 
and commanded that they, uh, they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land, and the rest, some on boards, some on broken pieces of the ship, and so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to the land. So the Apostle Paul, um, being carried as a prisoner, the ship wrecked, and he found himself in the sea. Right? 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 27, he goes through in these verses, and I'm not going to read them, I'm going to give you kind of a, synopsis of what it says he says in, in these verses he said five different times he was whipped with 39 lashes hmm. three different times he was beaten with rods he says he had two other shipwrecks besides the one we just read about right? and in one of those he floated a day and a night in the sea he says he got robbed by Jews and Gentiles, foreigners. Multiple times he had lies told on him. He said he suffered hunger, thirst, cold, and nakedness. So all these things that happened to Paul, uh, we read... And these are the things that came about in his life that he seems to be proud of here as he writes this letter. Uh, chapter 1, verse 12. I would, ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather under the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places, and many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So, we should take this as an example. Uh, when we run into those difficult things, difficult times, and understand that when we have our vision and our goal uh, set in the right place, that whatever comes our way, if the gospel is made more clear to somebody, then that's the most important thing. You know, the most important thing is not our comfort, it's not our lives. Uh, Paul followed the Holy Spirit. And that's the same thing that we do. We follow the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'll read to you the Macedonian call. Remember I mentioned that uh, uh, Philippi and Thessalonica, they were there in Macedon. Um, if you follow the Holy Spirit, you will absolutely be required to exercise faith. I think we've talked about that before. Acts chapter 16 and verse 9. This is the Macedonian call. He was there at Troas, I believe. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. And so, <clears throat> looking at the topic tonight, you know, the cure for loneliness. If you follow the Holy Spirit, you're not going to be lonely. You're going to be busy. Amen. Amen. Does this sound like Paul and Timothy got lonely? It doesn't sound like it. It sounds like they were busy <clears throat> serving the Lord. Uh, they were busy meeting people. They were busy learning about people. They were busy setting up uh, churches. They were busy checking on those churches. They were busy serving the Lord, doing what He wanted them to do. Uh, notice there in chapter 1, beginning in verse 1, let's just read down through about verse 7. And notice <clears throat> the joy that He has and the people that He has met and learned and 
given his life to. All right, chapter 1, verse 1, Philippians. Paul and Timothy, Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ. All right, look here. And to all the saints in Jesus which are at Philippi, with the bishops and the deacons. They knew all those people. He had close relationships with them. Grace be unto you and peace from our God, from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Always in every prayer of mine for you all making request with joy. Does that sound like he was lonely? For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the de uh, defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. So looking at these and looking at his life, the life that he lived, these people that he met, uh, the work of the church, you can tell as he set up these churches, he ordained these men uh, to be the bishops, it says, and the deacons. Uh, he built these relationships. He says there in verse 1, to all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi, bishops and deacons, uh, all of this represents in his life a very rich, fulfilling life. A very rich, fulfilling lifestyle. It's the same thing in the next city. If you go there to the book of Acts and follow after he leaves Philippi, he comes to the town of Thessalonica, and it was a very large city. But notice what it says there in the book of Thessalonians. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, 2. Uh, in verse 8, it says there, being, So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. Genuine, affectionate friendships brought about by being obedient to the Holy Spirit. Genuine, affectionate, good, deep friendships and relationships brought about by the gospel, mm -hmm. by the sharing of the gospel, by working in the church, by doing the work of the Lord, by being faithful to it, taking it on as a call, a calling in my life, uh, taking it on as uh, ownership. This is what the Lord has given me to do and this is what I'm going to die doing until he tells me to do something else. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to serve him till I, to the day I die. I'm going to serve him from now on forever and ever and ever. This is the, uh, uh, the attitude that the Apostle Paul had. And he talks about these very deep, genuine relationships. Second, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. He says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. So that means when it says effectually works in you that believe, that means that the work of God is working in their lives, this, uh, the Word of God is working in their lives the same way that the Word of God had worked in his life. And they were enjoying that relationship with God through the Holy Spirit the same way that Paul was. And that joy that was there, even in the midst of these difficult circumstances that we talked about. Uh, it says in verse 19, he goes on and on, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Hope, right? Joy, rejoicing. These things are not the um, descriptive words of someone that's lonely. These are descriptive words of somebody that has a rich, full life. 
not afraid to die, not afraid to face first persecution, doing something out of love uh, in a relationship with God, uh, serving Him. So let's make statements. If you're, if you're a Christian and you're suffering from loneliness, it doesn't speak well of your relationship to Jesus. That's right. Amen? I think that's a fair statement. If you're a Christian and you suffer from loneliness, it doesn't speak well of your relationship to Jesus. How about this? If you're a Christian and you suffer from loneliness, it doesn't speak well of your prayer life. <coughs> Philippians chapter 1, verse 4. I think I have that one right here. Yeah. Always in every prayer of mine for you all making request with joy. All right. So if you're a Christian and you suffer from loneliness, it doesn't speak well of your prayer life. If you're a Christian and you suffer from loneliness, it doesn't speak well of your Bible study. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 for this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you heard of us, you received it as the word of God. Right? Not the word from us. You received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. And so what he's saying there is the... the I like to call it a romance because that's really what it is. That romance that you enjoy with God, that deep fellowship that you get as you set aside that time in His Word every day. I'm faithful to go and read that Word. I'm faithful to allow Him to speak to me over the, the days and the weeks and the months. Uh, as I'm faithful to this, I... Uh, I find myself in those situations that are so fulfilling and those relationships that are so fulfilling. You know, I can look around this room and I, I know, you know, so many of you so well. And my life is so rich because of you. Uh, and and I, I testify that this is true by looking into your faces, you know, because, because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's effectual. It's like it says there. So if you're a Christian and you suffer from loneliness, it doesn't speak well of your Bible study. If you're a Christian and you suffer from loneliness, it doesn't speak well of your vision. You know, uh, Philippians 1 verse 6, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I like to say the days of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a day of Jesus when he returns. That's what the Bible's about. We're all waiting for his return. But he's going to return and set up that kingdom. I talk about it all the time, right? And those will be the days of Jesus Christ, the days of his leadership here on this earth, the days of his uh, leading us and us being able to go to him and worship at his feet. Uh, and that should be our vision, and that should be the vision that we have as we reach out to other people and as we share in other people's uh, difficult, uh, difficult times and sorrows. Uh, it also, in 1 Thessalonians 2.19, For what is our hope, our joy, our crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? So what is that vision? If you are a Christian and suffer from loneliness, it doesn't speak well of your vision. So it doesn't speak well of your relationship to Jesus, your prayer life, your Bible study, or your vision. Right? Because we can get busy and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us we're going to get in some tough times. We may find ourselves in the middle of the ocean somewhere. Right? <laughs> Hoping a shark doesn't come up from beneath. Right? Right? All right. The reason people are lazy about Bible study and prayer is because they don't want to hear from God. Is that a good statement? Afraid of what it says. Mm -hmm. I really don't. And if I just don't read it, I won't have to face it. Right? Right? The reason people are lazy about Bible study and prayer is because they don't want to hear from God. People don't want to hear from God because God requires faith. And faith is terrifying. Faith? I'd a whole lot rather live without faith. 
and it's so much easier, right? I can save up a million dollars, and I won't ever have to exercise faith. I can just always buy everything I need, right? Let me do that. That's so easy. Right? It's much more difficult to live by faith, isn't it? People don't want to hear from God because God requires faith, and faith is terrifying. Um, also, you might end up in the sea somewhere. Shipwreck. Or you may end up being beaten with rods. Or you may end up beating, having 39 stripes, right? 40 minus 1. Right? That's what it says. And so that's terrifying. Uh, there is an example of this in Scripture back in the book of Exodus. Uh, you remember when the... Um, The Hebrews, right? These were the children of Israel. They were coming out of Egypt on the way. And uh, they made it there to the mountain, you know, Mount Sinai. And God's going to tell Moses to come up here and we'll give you this law. And you go back down there and give it to the people, right? And God met with them there. And it was a very terrifying thing. And they said, because uh, I didn't go directly to the reference, but they after they had seen... God, or the, the thundering that went on and uh, the, the earthquakes and things that went on, they were scared. And that's where God, of course, Moses, you know, he went right on. It didn't bother him. He knew God and all. But the people were very afraid, and they told Moses in Exodus chapter 20, verse 19. Um, and, and what is Exodus chapter 20, right? That's where the Ten Commandments are. Mm -hmm. So Exodus chapter 20, verse 19, they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us unless we die, lest we die. So what does that tell us? I'd a whole lot rather hear somebody tell me about God and about the Bible and about their prayer life or whatever then I had to do it myself. Right? I don't really want to deal with God. <coughs> I'll, I'll, I'll listen to a preacher, and I'll listen to the radio, and I'll listen to the... But I'm not going to get one-on-one -on -one with him in prayer, <coughs> and I'm not going to get one-on-one -on -one with him in his word. Because he might actually require something of me. But if it's somebody else I'm listening to, I say, well, that's just him, right? Makes a big difference. Second uh, Corinthians chapter four, verse eleven. Um, you remember they said there, they said unto Moses, "Speak thou with us; we will hear." But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Well, the reference that goes with that in the New Testament is Second Corinthians four eleven. It says, For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Ooh. So we're required to die. Right? They were afraid to go to God. We're going to die if we go to God. right? Yet in the New Testament, you know, the Apostle Paul said, I die daily. You know? There's a lot of churches out there not preaching what you're talking about right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here's a statement. There is a difference in wanting to go to God through a mediator and wanting, wanting to go to God face to face. Right? There's a difference in wanting to go to God through a mediator and going to God face to face. And what does this speak of? This is your personal relationship with God through the Holy Spirit because of Jesus Christ reading his word and kneeling down in prayer to him, just you and him, and him leading you where he wants you to go through that personal quiet time. That's what this is about. And when you do that, you will not be lonely. <laughs> it will not happen. Because God, will he will lead you, he will romance you, as I was talking about. He will fill your life with excitement, with uh, all of this, these rich relationships, right? If you get busy, you find yourself, 
I don't know, say the Lord leads you to do something in the church. It's something that you notice being need done and nobody else notices it. And you think, why don't somebody do that? And you realize, well, it's God telling me to do that. So you start doing that. And all of a sudden other people, you know, start getting blessed. And all of a sudden you have somebody jump in there with you and, and then they got the same vision you have. And then you build that relationship and you work together and you come. And before long you got, you've reached all these people and you start getting to get in the baptismal pool with them. You know, say, well, get in there with us. You're the one that actually led them to Christ. And they get in there with us. Okay. So you get in there, and then you start seeing people get baptized because of your obedience, you know. And it all started between you and God. And those relationships just, just get so rich and so full and so good. That's what this is. Loneliness is not anywhere in the picture when you do that. All right. There's a difference in wanting to go to God through a mediator and wanting to go to God face to face. <laughs> Here are some examples of the difference. Exodus 17, 2. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt, wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? In other words, I'm not the one that's led you here where there's no water. <laughs> right? So... Uh, Exodus 15, 17, Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thy inheritance in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. So there is where God told Moses to carry them there. So when they started complaining to Moses about the water, Moses tells them, Look, you're not complaining to me. You're complaining to God. Get this thing straight. You need to have that relationship with God. Exodus 15, 24, and the people murmured against Moses, saying, what shall we drink? Exodus 16, 2, and the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Exodus 16, 8, and Moses said, this shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat and in the morning bread to the full, for that the Lord heareth your murmurings, which you murmur against him, and what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. All right? Now therefore, Exodus 19 and 5, Therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And so, you don't hear the apostle Paul murmuring and complaining about being, being beaten 40 minus 1 times, 39 stripes, you know, however many times it was. You didn't hear him complaining about the shipwreck. Oh, God, I'm out of there. It's just awful. I'm quitting. I'm not doing this no more. I'm going back to Egypt, right? Or I'm going back to Damascus. Or I'm going back to Jerusalem. Join up with them Pharisees. I'm a Pharisee among Pharisees. I don't have to live this way. I can have a good life, right? Find me a pretty little woman, get married, right? Live out my life. Not the Apostle Paul. He was obedient. He didn't murmur and complain, and that's the difference. Those people were afraid to have that one-on-one -on -one with God. Right? Where's there? And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear, but let not God speak unto us, lest we die. Well, that wasn't the Apostle Paul, and that shouldn't be us. Apostle Paul didn't complain, and they didn't complain. They didn't want to go to God. Right? So, we show how little we love God by listening to his servants only. We fear the awesomeness of God and we fear death. Right. We show how little we respect God by listening to his servants only. We res uh, Respect demands heeding. There comes a time that we stop using an intercessor and we become an intercessor. Right? Yeah. As we grow. And it is a life. Um, I've been here for September will be 15 years. I have not regretted one minute of it. Not one. We've had some tough times. But it's not something that I do begrudgingly. You know, I, I come here because 
I'm grateful that you guys let me keep coming here. <laughs> I, I, I just hope you don't send me away. You know? All right. So, uh, but anyway, I'm just giving a testimony to the truth of this devotion. Is all I'm trying to do. It's the same for all of us. All right. Amen. Okay. Any comments? Oh boy, eight o'clock. You know the school shooting yesterday is just I know been heavy on all our hearts, especially the way this church loves children. And um, I think of the the first really bad school shooting in Columbine. And if you'll remember, one of those young men that were killing those kids asked one of those young women. She's 16 years old. That's why I think of every school shooting happens. And he said, are you a Christian? And she said, yes, I am. And he shot and killed her. Now that was fake. Because I wonder what, what at that age especially, would I have had that faith? Would I have been that firm and strong to say? Because she had already seen people die, so she knew she was about to die. So I think of that every time. Of course, we know all those little babies went to heaven. But those poor parents. We just really, Can't imagine. We just really need to lift them up. Anyone else a word? Okay. Well, Malia, would you dismiss us, please? Thank you. Okay. Now, let's all stand together. Go ahead. Let's stand up. Oh, you know. Oh, you know. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings upon us, Lord. Thank you for bringing each of us here safely tonight, Lord. Uh, Lord, we pray you'll be with us all as we return home. Lord, we know that there's so much evil in this world. And I just pray that our little church can stay strong and that we will always defend what is right and that we will fight against evil every chance we get and that we will depend on you in everything and, and help us to be more like Paul. To not grumble and complain, and to distrust in you like he did, and to always find that joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.